Yeah, good afternoon, peace and blessings. You know, I just want to continue on what I usually make my content about, you know, spiritual warfare and the correlation between narcissism and having demons attached to your vessel. Being a, excuse me, being an empty vessel, being an NPC, um, demonic puppet, demonic agent. Um, you know, a spiritual exercise I do is I make videos off of one word now. So the word I want to you know, talk about today is resisting. You know, I'm in my wilderness stage, mode period, whatever you want to label it as. You know, on the spiritual journey and my narrow path to heaven. You know, in the Bible it says, resist the devil and he shall flee. And I've been doing just that. I resist the devil every day. I bear my cross. If you were chosen, the light of this world, if you were a lover of God, you have to resist the devil. You have to resist temptations. You have to resist your flesh. Every day I wake up as a fleshly man but I resist the devil, I bear my cross. Every day I wake up. It is not easy, it's very difficult. Sinning is easy, but sinning is also giving up. Sinning is being complacent. Sinning is allowing the devil, is allowing, excuse me, the devil to control your life, to control your spirit, to control your mind, to run the show. But if you are spiritually aware, if you are spiritually connected, you'll understand that the devil, demons, have no authority over you more than what you give to them. You are a child of God. You are made out of God's own likeness. Anyone and everyone can be gifted with the blessings of the Holy Spirit. You have to seek first the kingdom. You have to resist resisting. You know, at first, in the beginning of my spiritual journey, I wasn't resisting the devil as much. Now I resist the devil so much that I'm in a good, pretty moderate standing with God. I'm not Jesus. I'm not David. I'm not Moses. I'm, I'm, I'm myself. God only gives you the battles that he knows you can conquer. He's not asking you to be anyone else. He's not asking you to be Jesus Christ himself. He's asking you to mirror his teachings and his walk on this earth the best of your ability. Resisting, bearing your cross, resisting your flesh. You know, I'm a man, I'm a young man. You know, I lost my virginity late in life in later years, my, in my early 20s, you know, I lust for women. I want to be with a woman. I'm, I'm a heterosexual male. But I do not lie with women. I resist my flesh. But I still acknowledge the fact that I have flesh, that I am lustful of them, but I resist it. I bear my cross. It's very easy for me to lie with a woman as we speak, as I make this video. But I resist my flesh. Because it's business, it's the business of souls. It's no gray area. It's only black and white with the God, with, with God, Yahweh, and the devil. It's black and white. Everybody wants to find loopholes, you know, to serve God. You know, these 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 Pharisees, these these so-called you know Christians of this age of this of these end times. You know, they look at chosen ones, light of this world, and, and true lovers of God who are actually connected to God as the Pharisees, but you are because you live lives of sin, excuse me, lives of sin, and then you go to church on Sunday and you scream holy hymns for a few hours just to do it again. You do not resist your flesh. You make loopholes to make yourself feel and look good to distract yourself from the point and the fact that you do not bear your cross. And people like myself, people who are actually connected to God, the light that you carry, and the fact that you resist your flesh, you will make people nervous, you will make people angry. People will look at you and see you as a reflection of themselves and the things that they are not doing. They will look for ways to demean you, to down you, to downplay you, to demonize you. 
because they are the true demons. And when they see you in the light that you carry, it is a reminder of what they could have been by resisting their flesh, what they used to be when they resisted their flesh, or what they want to be if they chose to resist their flesh. But they simply just do not make the choices to resist their flesh. You do. You put your first foot forward. You resist your flesh. You bear your cross. You step your foot in the face of the devil every time you breathe, every time you wake up, every time you glorify God and you serve God. You know, I do not judge people because I was once of a sinful mind as well, a carnal mind, a, 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 a reprobate mind. I do not wave any fingers, but I will rebuke anyone who seeks to demonize me when I was obviously chosen by God. If God made you, he made me, he made the devil. He made everything that is in this universe, good or evil. So if he chose me and others as good, who is it? anyone to demonize that you must obviously serve the devil if you want to demonize something that god has set in place then you love the devil you just don't understand it because you're spiritually dead but i do not judge people who sin i do not hate them i understand because i was once them You know, I felt the weight of other people's curses for years, for a few years, a year and a half. That wasn't destined for my spirit, that I didn't attribute, that I didn't accumulate. So I understand just by sharing flesh, just by not resisting my flesh and choosing to lie with a woman and break God's covenant. When you lie with women that you are not married to, that God has not sent you, you share their blessings and curses. If you are male, even female, you must resist your flesh and wait for God to send you a spouse to share your blessings with an abundance. Sex is great, sex is cool, but sex is fleeting. It is a fleeting feeling. And when you are done with it, you are left empty because it is to glorify God. It is not to play around. It is not to distract you. So you must resist your flesh. I'm a young man. I'm 28. I haven't even entered my prime. I lust for women. I find all types of women attractive. Tall, big, small. All shades. But I do not lie with them. And I will not. Because I understand that sex is important to God. The devil wants you to resist the boundaries that God has placed on certain things in this world, in this physical realm, to get you to join him in his damnation. Everything that God has set a boundary over, the devil seeks to pervert it, to destroy it, to find loopholes for you to damn your soul. You have to resist it. The devil has no authority over any walking, breathing child of God. But you would not know this if you're too busy following the crowd and not resisting the temptation to fit in. I had to set myself apart from my family because I was taking on their curses. I had to set myself apart from women I was lying with because I was taking their curses from friends because I was taking their curses in my old sinful life. Now I'm receiving the benefits of that, resisting my flesh. When you carry the light, when you are the light of this world, when you are chosen, you produce a high vibrational frequency into the world that scares demons that scares the devil himself. Because it's the Holy Spirit working through you. You're a physical manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So keep your business with God right. 
This is the business of souls. It is not easy to resist your flesh. And I'm not condemning anybody who doesn't. But you have to make the right decision for what you want to do in your latter life. This is the beginning life. But you have two. You have a physical life and a spiritual one. We are spirits. So whatever destination you wish for your second life, choose wisely. This is the business of souls. Either resist your flesh or find loopholes. Do what you want to do. Become your own God that can die, that can be harmed, that can bleed. You know, in this carnally minded world, in this reprobated minded world, follow the world, love the world like God says not to. Don't follow God's boundaries and find out yourself what happens when you reap the fruits of those choices. But you cannot blame God. God doesn't tell you to be perfect. That is impossible. He tells you to resist your flesh, which is pretty simple. God understands you're going to sin. You are made from sin. Adam and Eve, our forefathers, literally made you from sin. It is an inevitable for someone to be born in this physical world and not sin. But God says resist your sin. He doesn't say find loopholes to keep repetitively sinning. That is blasphemy. So in the business of souls, you have to plant your flag for whatever side you want to end up on. What is for the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness? But you cannot blame God for your choices. God tells you to have faith of a mustard seed. A mustard seed is smaller than a dime, smaller than a penny, smaller than a nickel. So if you cannot have faith as big as a mustard seed, then you obviously know where you will end up. It is inevitable. The only perfect man in creation and in existence in this physical realm was Jesus Christ, Yeshua. God does not ask you to be him. He asks you to resist your flesh as best as you can, as much as you can, and glorify him by doing that. That is pretty simple to me. It is a good business decision because I wish to reap the fruits of my, of, of, of my labors in this world in the second life. I wish to maximize them. That is business, the business of souls. And like I always say at the end of my videos, you know, cloak yourself the arm of God, you know, become a prayer warrior, you know, pray for spiritual gifts, especially the gift of discernment. Pray for the gift of discernment. It is wisdom, his ability to see spirits, to see people's spirits, to see the spirits they're under. But wisdom is important. Every person from the Bible that was in high standing with God was wise. From Jesus to Noah, they were wise. Wisdom is the key to keeping your business with God 